for those who remember, for those who will never forget it, and for a whole new generation who will experience it for the very first time. The Star Wars Trilogy. Timeless adventures that changed movie making forever. Now, the entire trilogy, digitally mastered in VHS, with ultimate in sound, picture quality. This will be your last chance to own the original version of Star Wars, the George Lucas masterpiece that launched the Star Wars trilogy. The Force is forever. For all generations. The original Star Wars trilogy on video. One last Leonard Malton. You know, in the old days of those Saturday matinee cliffhanger serials, the audience had to wait an entire week to find out what happened to its hero. George Lucas went well beyond that. He kept us all waiting years between Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and then finally, The Return of the Jedi. Thanks for being here, George. By the time you got to Episode 3, did anything from public feedback or from your own second thoughts change your vision of what the third installment should be? Or is it the way you thought the world would turn out? No, it's pretty much the way it was always thought to come out. I mean, the, I had to make certain changes of things because in the original screenplay, the, the Ewoks were Wookiees and, and Chewbacca really wasn't the co-pilot. So, um, and so when I did the first film, yeah. I love the Wookiee so much, I said, well, i got to get a Wookiee in even though those may never get done. So I took the Wookiee out of the battles and made him the co-pilot. Uh, because originally they were sort of a primitive race of people who couldn't fly or couldn't do anything. And because uh, that was the point. And um, so I had to sort of, I had to figure out how I was going to do Wookiees, and I basically cut them in half and called them Ewoks. But it was, it was um, a lot of that stuff is all all there, but in, in the original it was a ground battle and an air battle all together. How did you ever think of Jabba the Hutt? Well, Jabba, it's one of those things I needed a, a gangster. I mean, I had to, he was in the first film, and uh, in the, uh, you know, in the special edition, we're, we're putting back a lot of material with Jabba the Hutt in the first film, in the, in the very first film that we did. And um, he, so he was in that, you know, he was this big gangster. Uh, and, um, it wasn't until the later that we actually, because we couldn't do that sequence, we didn't have the time. But uh, when we got to the third one, chop up here, then we did this whole thing of designing that one as a big, kind of repulsive character. Uh, and uh, you know, we had a lot of designers, kind of with various versions of Jabba the Hutt. Was it a conscious decision to move a good chunk of the action for part three into an earthly outdoor terrain? Uh, it's so different from anything you see in the first two films. Well, it was. I'm, I'm very conscious of the environments, and I try to have at least three environments in a movie, and I try to have them as different as possible, and then from movie to movie, I try to have the environments as different as possible. Um, you know, in the first movie, we were on the sand thing, it was all kind of a brown color, and so then in the second one, I put it in the snow, and it was all kind of white, uh, and then I did the green, you know, swampy kind of thing. Uh, and the third one, you know, I mean, you sort of, I mean, what can you do in terms of environments? You have to shoot it somewhere on the surface. Unfortunately, we can't go somewhere else. So, you know, the forest was really about the only thing I had left. And originally, even with the Wookiees, they, they, the Wookiees lived in a forest environment. They lived in the same kind of tree houses, and they did that. You know, it was, they were sort of earth people. There's a whole motif of, like, Luke's planet. Every, everybody is brown. There's lots of browns and earth tones. Everything is earth tones and light tan, light brown, uh, flesh color. You know, it's all very uh, warm, warm tones. And then when you go to the Death Star, it's all black and white. Everything is black and white all the time. I mean, it's all very harsh. 
and contrasting black and white. And I use that a lot. So I make large art was the same way. You know, it was you know where the rookies lived. It was all sort of green and brown. And I added that in, so it was a motif that went from you know, sort of tan brown to a green brown. And uh, so that, that sort of still exists in the actual film. It's a, there's a whole color and environment motif that goes through, and the good guys are all the earth colors, and the bad guys are all colorless. <laughs> Your many, many fans, and there are many avid fans, as you know, of the Star Wars trilogy, are wondering about the next three films. And why is it taking so long? Why does it take so long? And how long will it take? <laughs> well, um, I am I'm working on the, the next three films, and, and it's it's uh, 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 I am in the process of writing the three screenplays now. And it takes a while to write to write the screenplays. It to, to write the first Star Wars took about two years, so I'm writing three scripts at once. It won't take that long, but uh, uh, it takes a long time to prep them. And uh, hopefully we'll have one finished uh, for '98. If not, it'll be '99. But um, the uh, we're doing all three at once. I'm writing all three at once, and the first three are based on the backstory that relates to where everybody came from, how they got there, uh, what their relationships are. Has this backstory been in your head all along from the inception? Or yeah, yeah. I, mean, I had to do the backstory in order to write. The first three. Uh, I had to know where Darth Vader came from. I had to know what his relationship to Luke was. I had to know how Ben Kenobi figured in all of this. Um, you know, I had to realize that there were. You know, I had to understand that there were twins, and the whole arc of the story uh, in the in the three that are out there now is really the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. And so the first three are really that I'm learning now are really about Anakin Skywalker. So now you have a redemption of somebody you don't really even know. He's just always in a black suit. But you don't know how he fell from grace and the, the trauma that went through to get him to there. And then his son brings him back. But it's, um, you know, and the real story hasn't even been told yet. What would it take to persuade you to go back onto a sound stage and direct a film yourself? Well, I'd like to direct again. I mean, I'm very interested um, in still in directing. And um, there is a possibility I may direct one of the next Star Wars. If I do direct again, it'll be the first one so that I can set the stage and, the, and you know, how everything works uh, for the other directors to follow. But as we approach the millennium, we can look forward to the, the prequel trilogy. Definitely.